Media Monster Club Chats. Right now, um, I have a very special guest. Um, he is a dear friend of mine that I've known for, I guess at this point, maybe close to 20 years. Um, he is a promoter. He actually throws uh, major events um, all throughout the tri-state area. Um, right now, I'm going to introduce my guest. On my show today, we have... Money Mike. Money Mike. <laughs> Limelight Entertainment. Limelight Entertainment. Yo, That's thanks for coming is. on, homie. Anytime. I appreciate it. I Anytime. appreciate it. Anytime. Yeah, so um, let's just kind of take it back a little bit because um, I don't think people really know uh, like our history. Right. You know what I mean? Because a lot of us, a lot of us kind of like known each other since we were like kids or as right. we graduated high school right. before we even started making clothes right, in the right. music business right. or throwing parties. Right. So let's, let's just elaborate and let people know how, how, we, how we know each other. Right. <laughs> um, I think it all started, you know, I met Rhythm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm from Mount Vernon, originally from the Bronx, New York, Edenwood Projects, and I moved to Mount Vernon in 88. So, you know, I mm. went to high school in Mount Vernon and stuff like that. So I met Rhythm because, you know, back in like the late 80s, 90s, when, you know, just new to Westchester, you know, the Galleria was the bomb. Right, you know what I mean? Right. All, all, all the high school girls is in the Galleria Mall and stuff like that. So um, they had a, a store called Leather Bound and, and, you know, expensive Pele Soda Club coat. So me and my friend uh, Marshall from Mount Vernon, B.I., um, <clears throat> we bought uh, Pele's there, and that's how I met Rhythm, because Rhythm used to always be in the mall, and you had a friend that worked in Leather Band. I, f I can't remember his name right, right now. So um, me and him shared a lot of ideas back then. You know, I wanted to open up a clothing store, a sneaker store, and stuff like that. So I always was like a part of, you know, the whole money shuffle. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna let people know why I was always in the mall. I was always, hus <laughs> I was always hustling them t-shirts. Always, always, <laughs> always. Since 1992, 93, yes, yes. I was always yes. hustling them t-shirts. 92, 91. Getting that rhythm out always, there. Yeah. And that's basically how the rhythm clothing line and everything, you know, started. Right. Um, also, too, right? Now you go by the name of uh, <coughs> Money Mike. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So let's let's talk a little bit about. Uh, what that name kind of represents um, for you as far as um, being a business entrepreneur right. because definitely your focal is to uh, you know make money and, right. and prosper in life right so right. how is that how is that did you come up with that concept or did someone else uh, come actually up with that? Um, a guy from the Bronx a Guyanese friend of mine named Dave um, he actually came up with the name for me um, okay you know I, I was always taking like a lot of entrepreneur risk. You know, I was involved with like a sneaker store a long time ago, okay. and um, I, I took a couple of risks in real estate and stuff like that. I got a lot of friends in real estate, so I was always down for the cause. You know, if it had something to do with money and making money, I was down for the cause. So he started the name, and it just followed me. That's like we're going back to like. 96, 95, right, you know right, what I mean? Right, so, right, yeah, right. that's how that well, started. Well, I can't front because most of the years that I've seen you, right. you was in, like, big vehicles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Benzes, Everything. Range Rovers. Range Rover, Lexus. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had it all. Right. I did it all. So, so it all. it's not, you, yeah. the, name don't, nah. the name goes with, yeah, it goes with, with, the, with the person. With the face. It's not yeah, fronting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my car game was serious. <laughs> yeah, I do it for TV. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. So, now... As the years develop, right, getting into the uh, the promotion game mm. as far as throwing events, um, how did you actually, um, how did you make a decision that, you know what, um, I could have did various things, but mm. I am going to actually start throwing parties, have an exclusive clientele, and do something that is going to make people, um, you know, enjoy themselves and entertain themselves. How did that whole piece come about as far as you being a promoter and throwing these events? Um, I think it all started from when I moved to Mount Vernon. When I moved to Mount Vernon, um, you know, just Mount Vernon guys, man, those guys love to party. So they really okay. put me on the party scene. And I'm going back to like 89, 88, right. like Octagon, the, 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 the oh. Grand, the Flamingo, the Roxy, the, wow. the, 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 the Suffer zone. Club, the Red <laughs> Zone. Like those wow. dudes, like, you know, took club into another level, like, you know, so, you know, I hung out with the best of them, you know, one of my good friends, Joe Black, you know, that's Heavy D, man, and just like, just hang with those dudes and Pete Rock and just going to the rink and all that. Right. It, it, it was just crazy. So also, I'm meeting a lot of people in the music industry. Right. You know what I mean? So making my own contacts and stuff like that. So 
<clears throat> I know a large, vast of people being out from the Bronx, grew up in Mount Vernon, you know, meeting okay. people in the music industry. With the music industry comes parties, so you meet promoters, right. you meet security, you meet DJs, you know what right. I mean? So over the years, like, a lot of faces have changed, but some of the faces are still there. So <clears throat> I've known a lot of people over the years. So um, I guess my popularity, you know, not to give myself a pat on the back, right. is kind of high. So right. um, I'm going to say maybe, like, going into the 2000s now, it's a whole new millennium, you okay. know. Party scene is different in New York, right. you know what I mean? Um, the party scene is, like, more heavier in, like, Miami, Texas, and stuff like that. Yeah. So New York kind of slowed down, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm going to say that because of the recession kicked in, mm, okay. sources of income, second jobs is real scarce. So promoting, if you do it right, it's a it's it's a paycheck in a day. Right, right. To be honest with you. Right. If you do it right. Right. You know what I mean? And um a friend a good friend of mine, he's from the Bronx, promoter, Eric Presley, um, all in the family entertainment. He was talking to you know, talking to me about promoting for like a while, like a good year, like mm. trying to get me promote like Mike, right. you know a lot of people, blah blah blah. You got the nice cars, you and your friends, you know, it'll be good for you, blah right, blah blah. So right. you know, I, I, a few people came to me and I wasn't really like I don't know about the whole party thing. Like right. throwing the party. Throwing parties, selling I, tickets. Now I was like, good. My thing. I, right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm good for going to a party, party now. Right. I used to party four days a week, five days a week. Right. You know, I'm a little older now, so maybe two days a week, maybe three, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? So it was really him who influenced me and that was like he was talking to me about this since like O two. Right. Now is that E aka E Press? Right, E Press, okay. right. Okay. All the family entertainment. All right. So yeah, that's what um okay. I used to go to Club Body in Harlem, mm. right? Uh, it was like an after work Thursday thing there. Right. So uh, I never forget. Somebody told me Shaq had a party there, a, a New Year's Eve party. So I'm like, what spot is this in Harlem? Like Shaq is in Harlem, like. Right. So they redid uh, the West Side of Harlem, like. Right, right next to the water, the Hudson. Right. They we did the whole thing, and they got like three clubs over there. It's real nice back there, and um, I started going there in the spring. It was an every Thursday after work thing, and it like took off. I was there like every Thursday, like June, July, August. So, um, the following year they changed the promoters, so I got real cool with the owner. I introduced Eric Presley to him because, you know, he's a promoter. He wanted to promote there. He started promoting there, and he wanted me to come in with him. Right. And actually, um, I went in with him at Body to start promoting, and we collaborated with um, some Harlem people like uh, Sugar J, Huddy, R.I.P., passed away. Right. Um, Artie Bull, a Harlem cat from 140th. So um, we collaborated with the Harlem guys, and... Um, it was a good project. Um, I'm gonna say another promoter that was down with it. I brought him in, Banks from Paperboy Entertainment. Okay. I right. brought Banks in that, and um, the project was a good project. It lasted for like maybe six, seven months, and that's what that was my introduction to doing parties. Right. Okay. Club Body in Harlem. So, you know, Facebook just started. Right. That it's year new, it started right. in January. This is like I'm going back to like '08, going into '09. It just started, so. I never forget before I started promoting, um, um, Facebook is free. Right. You can market yourself. Major. It's free. Right. Yeah, you're generating a whole bunch of people on Facebook, and I was sitting there like, like looking at Facebook, like there's got to be a way that you know you could incorporate this and make some money. It's free. free like. Right. So, the club promoting thing, our body came on time. I was showed how to use Facebook with the promoting. You know, you got a lot of um, promoters that, you know, they're into the flyers. Right. They go make 5,000 flyers and stuff like that. They pass it out, whatever, whatever. And I pretty much started doing promoting from Facebook and text. Right. You know, the flyer thing is, I mean, it's cool. Good advertisement. You know, hit the street, the old school way of doing it. But it's a new era right now. Facebook, right. texting. It's a new era. Right, right. <laughs> and what I think, too, is when you do the texting or Facebook, I think that people, is feel more personal. <coughs> right. I mean, the flyer thing is like an invite 
but now you're you're able to interact with the person now. Right. You know I mean, you send them a text. Or right. They text right. you back. Or you right. hit them on Facebook with boom, and now they're inboxing you or right. asking you questions on, you know, you know about the bottle specials or whatever's mm -hmm. going on in the venue. So I definitely, um, <coughs> I definitely think it's a, it's a good look. Right. Uh, the Facebook thing. Right. Now, also what I realized too that there are a lot of club owners mm -hmm. that aren't promoters. Right. So what I what I like to iterate is that a promoter is efficient and is very important to the club. Right. Because most of the time, 99% uh, of the time, is based on popularity. So you can have some paper, open up a nice venue, nice restaurant, and this and that, but your, your, your friend base or your network is not really that heavy. So now you get a popular person that, for whatever reason, whether they're in the music, fashion, or they just know a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? Now you bring them in as a promoter, now your venue is popping. Now mm -hmm. you got constant you know clientele <coughs> consumers right now you have a company or, or you just go by money mike Do right. you have a I, I, well? I go by money mike and my company name is limelight entertainment okay limelight entertainment now right. how did you come up with the concept of limelight well i came up with limelight because like over the years like before i started promoting in 08 um you know that limelight name was sticking to me like you know different chicks right. it's like oh, you always in the limelight you know right. you like to be on the scene you know so i kept hearing the name limelight for you know a couple of different women and a guy so when i was sitting down thinking of, of a name you know that name was one of the names that was on the paper so i ran with it limelight and it's right. spelled with two y's in it right. instead of the i okay yeah Okay, that's hot. That's yeah, hot. Yeah. Now I want to get into um, another aspect of uh, right. a promoting game. Right. Now, what makes your parties, your events, different from what um, the general <coughs> popular <coughs> population of promoters? What What is makes you, you, your your venues unique compared right. to other venues and other parties? What are you doing differently, or what are you giving your consumer or your clients that make you know continues to make them come back to your events? Well. You know, I'm I, I'm a '74 baby. You know, I'm 37 right. years old. So, I'm from the '90s where the parties was like right. the best. You know what I mean? Yes. So, for the most part, I mean, you got a lot of promoters that have different styles. You got promoters who cater to the you know the youth, right? 20 year olds to 25, 28. Right. I cater morely to like 30 and up. Right. to the 40 the early 40s you know some young people and stuff like that but i cater to like you know pretty much our age group so i'm bringing back out the people who used to party in the 90s plus the new babies who's coming out in the right. 2000s stuff like that right. so the mature they right. they heard about what we did in the 90s but they right. wasn't there yeah. so right. they're meeting our crowd and, and some of their crowd is you know meshing in so i'm right. meshing all crowds together um one key to promoting is um birthday parties, setting up birthday celebrations, right? incorporating that in the party. You know, everybody wants to feel special, you know, yeah. a, a part of something and stuff like that. So, you know, you got to be a host with the most, you know, right. pretty much, you know, cake and stuff like that, right. you know, free bottle of champagne, depending on who the person is and stuff. And um, I try to keep it, I try to work with, if I work with other promoters, right. I try to work with promoters like, you know, I don't want to have all promoters from Mount Vernon. You okay. know what I mean? Like, three of us shouldn't be promoting. We're from Mount Vernon. Like, so I try to work with somebody from the Bronx. I try to work with somebody from Harlem. Right. I try Different to work with somebody from Westchester, Connecticut. Right. Okay. So this way, when you throw a party, if you have two promoters, three promoters, even four promoters, it's different conglomerates of people getting together. Right. And that makes the party much better. Like, no one wants to see the person from around the way. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So they want to interact <laughs> with different people. Different people have different things to talk about, work or whatever the case may be. It's a small world. It's a, it's a social base about networking right now. Because right. you'd be surprised who you meet who come out to the parties. Right. You might meet somebody who works at a car dealership who's hooking your mother up or somebody who could get you a mortgage. I mean, you'd be surprised you, who you meet at my parties. So. Right. Now, one thing I can say about <coughs> parties or events, right. that's where a lot of the deals and networking absolutely, goes down. Absolutely, absolutely. the music artists, mm -hmm. business people that's in the entertainment business, right. even though it may be a short conversation, right. 
you know what I mean, conversation piece, it's still like, you it know It goes what? a long way. Here's my business card. Right. Right. Here's my BBM. Right. Here's BBM. my number. Holler at me during the week when I'm right. in my office. Exactly. And then, you know what and I'm it saying? It goes a long way. It goes a long way. Trust me. You right. know, it goes a long right. way. I, right. I made a lot of things happen. I made a lot of contacts happen for other people. So it's just the nature of the business. It's not just partying. Right. <laughs> right. Now, <clears throat> I want to get into a real controversial question. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because as like myself, right, I'm getting ready to start my own venue. Right. As a promoter, right. but I'm not a new, I'm not new to this. I've right. done things, I've done fashion shows, I've done all sorts of events in the, over the last twenty years. So the trick is that what makes what, what what do we consider a real promoter for you? Like if somebody comes into the game, you know what I mean. Of course, if they throw a birthday party or mm -hmm. celebration, it's going to be major because mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Um, it's their celebration, and mm -hmm. people are going to come support. Mm -hmm. So now, does that automatically make them a prom or makes them a promoter because they threw one successful birthday bash and now they're they're in the game and now they're the number one promoter on the scene, or is it a level of consistency <coughs> over a certain amount of venues that you do? And there's another question: Does a real promoter classify itself where you can do a party by yourself, or is it, you know, because a lot of people I see in the game. They always got to conglomerate with someone else. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's good if it's a right. big venue. Right. But I think too, the 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 promoters that can stand on their own two feet. You know what I mean? At some point, you see their name by themselves at a venue. You know what I mean? And they mix it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. What's your ideal, like on, on the on what's a real promoter and what type of work you have to put in for you to really be respected? Okay, first off, I want to start saying like if you're starting off promoting, um. It's hard to get 40 to 50 people to come out. Right. That's not easy. <laughs> you know, people be like, oh, I want to get the spot that holds 300 people, 400 people. But could you really ask yourself, could you get 40 to 50 people to come out for you? Right. Like consistently, like if you're throwing an every week party or once a month party, 40 to 50 people is a lot of people that said, Mike called me and I'm coming out because of him. Not because your girlfriend called and said Mike is throwing a party and then she had 10 people coming. I'm right. talking about individual, 50, 40 people is a lot of people to come out. Right. So we're, now we're not gonna get to 200 and 300 people Right, now. those are big numbers, right. You know, th that's a big fan base. So you have to like build up your fan base, number one. Um, you have to, number two, you have to be on the scene. If you're a new promoter, so right. meaning being on the scene, like you, you're, you're knowing what's going on out here from parties in Westchester, parties in the Bronx, Harlem, Jersey. Like, you got to be on the gotta scene if you really want to expand. Right. If you want to, you know, there's some local promoters that they're cool with doing local things. There's some promoters that's cool with doing stuff within their, a, a town, a county, and stuff right. like that. And there's, I think you need to expand and know everything, everybody, every promoter, because you learn different styles. Mm, Somebody right. who's promoting Harlem, you could take a little piece of their style and, and put it with your style. Someone who's promoting Upper Westchester, you know, everybody's style is going to be different. different so if right. you could gel it all together and, and just make it something great, it's good. Learn, learn the business. Now, promoting is like the rap business. Yes. A lot of people just want to rap, don't know the business, and get jerked. Right. Learn the business. There's three key things here. Mm, okay. Get to know owners, get to know DJs, and get to know promoters. You got a lot of promoters that share information, you know, and want to teach and educate. Right. Same thing with DJs, you know, get to know all the DJs. It's a networking base. Let's just say you might want to get a spot in Harlem. You might be able to go to the DJ to get the spot. He might introduce you to the owner. Right. Or you might get to know a promoter, even though if you don't know the promoter or not go to work with the promoter, promoter might, you know, if he likes your style, he might introduce you to an owner, like, oh, Mike, it's cool, like, I'm going to send him the referral. So you have to remain a class act, so when you do want a referral to get a spot in the beginning, right. you know, you're not that known, the referral is, like, not a problem, you know okay. what I mean? And um, just study the craft, study the business, you know, ask a lot of questions, take a lot of things in, learn. Um, Learn how to put a basic, like if you go 
and, and try to structure a deal with some of these guys who owners who have lounges and clubs and stuff like that learn to know how to put together like a a, a standard deal you know you got a lot of people who's getting <clears throat> Uh, abused, right? You know who who they get out here. They can't get a standard deal where you know they're getting the door, the um, percentage of the bar right, and right. stuff like that. You know, a uh, 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 a lot of owners give you a um, a budget, like right. they help you out with the DJ and stuff like that. There's a lot of promoters that don't even know that's available. They're just so happy to get the spot, spot. Right. that they're not getting the bar. They're not getting a budget. You know what I mean? So right. learn the business. Sit down and talk to the owners. Learn the business before you rush in. And, you know, a lot of people have different reasons for throwing parties, too. Right. You know, you got your promoters who's just throwing parties. They're trying to meet girls, you know. Right. You got, you got promoters that's just cool because they're making a certain amount of money. So it's like a supplement income. Income, right. So you got to know what you're in it for. Right. You know what I mean? Because it can stunt your growth if you're thinking small. You know what I mean? Right. So... I always say learn the business, learn how to put together a deal of what you want. So when you sit down and talk to these owners, they don't take advantage of you, and you can get a good deal, and this way the, the, the venue could be prosperous. Right. Um, going back to one of your questions, like what makes a, a successful promoter, can a person do it by itself? Um, I think like in this game now, you know, maybe back in the days, there was like a lot of popular people, and there's a few that did it by themselves. Like I'm talking about, like four or five hundred people, totally by themselves. Right. They don't make them like that no more. Right, um, right. It's a team effort. Can't be afraid to share the money. Right. So it's a, it's a team effort. Um, don't be afraid to build a team, spread out the team. Um, you got to take test runs on people. Right. Okay. Because you work with a person one time, you know, you might talk to them all the time. But then when you work with them on a business level, right. you're saying to yourself, you know, I, I, I can't work with this person. Right. You know, it, it doesn't work. You know, when money cross hands, the personality changes. So right. usually when you do a project with a person, it's like a test run. Right, okay. You know what I mean? To know, you'll know after that first party if you could work with them again. Again, right. Trust me, right. you'll know. So work with different people to know, even if it's the first time, take a chance on certain people. And, and work with them to see if you know, like you could do future business on them. Some people are worth the risk and some people just ain't. Right. You know what I mean? So it's all about building a team. Don't be afraid to share the money and ultimately building your fan base. Right, okay. Gotta know the people who party. To know the people who party, you have to party. Right. You know what I mean? So you know who's hanging out. And like I said, Facebook is incredible because you can really see who's partying. Partying, right. Facebook right Facebook is like newspapers like Daily News the New York Times you right. know what I mean every day people's on there you know just it's interesting the, the stuff you see right. so so build your fan base and then you know once you get to I figure like 80 to 100 people yourself and you're teaming up with other promoters and like even like two promoters like you help each other because my fan base wants to see your fan base and it's like other energy and then other people are telling other people and it's like a pyramid shrinking right. it down other people are telling other people so and that's like if you work with three promoters or four promoters it's like a pyramid because people are bringing other people in then, that's why right. it's very important for your team to be spread out like we all can't be from the same area right. it has to be well spread out and um once you if you could pack out a spot that's 150 200 then you shoot for the big club that's 500 600 a lot of people want to do it backwards they figure i get the spot that holds five six hundred they're looking at the money aspect of it right five six hundred people that's a lot of money so if you're new i would say start small and the spots that hold 100, 150, if you're getting a steady packing that out, then you, and, you, you, and you're building your fan base, right. you're on your way. Start small, crawl before you walk. walk That's right. what they always say, right? Yes. So start small, build yourself up for the big projects. And you know, you're creating a name for yourself because if you create a good name, promoters hear about you, owners hear about you, DJs hear about you. Right. 
that's just how the game goes. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So now, so let's go way back and let's reiterate some things that you just <coughs> said. To be a successful promoter, you said that yeah. you have to build relationships. Right. Right, with the owners. Owners. Relationships with the DJs. DJs, right. Right, and relationships with... Promoters. Promoters. Absolutely. Now, the trick is that I've seen a few people come into the game. Right. Bad relationships with promoters. Right. Bad relationships with DJs. Right. Bad relationships with promoters. <coughs> everybody else right. that's, that's involved with right. it. Right, right. Um, I'm just going to say one thing to, like, those people. Right. They're, like... Most of us are friends. Most of us outside of the club scene, outside of, of that scene, we're friends and we know each other. So the trick is that a lot of us support each other, exchange information, go to each other's events because we're friends. So once you start separating yourself um, from that circle <coughs> of friends and that support system, then you're on your own. And once you're on your own, you know what I'm saying? I don't, you, you're... you're your level of success is going to eventually diminish because nobody's going to want to do business with you. Now, another part of it is that you mentioned to me something very important. As the years you you were in this game, right. you've had other business ventures, you've dealt, dealt with business. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that when they come into the promoting game, they're not you. First of all, they're not used to seeing like five hundred or a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Or better, right. in one shot, in right. one night. Right. They just lose their head right. from that. Right. So the business aspect of it, understanding payroll, making sure everybody gets paid, you know what I mean? Making sure that your people that are working for you gets taken care of before the end of the night, before the par- before the, before you leave the party. All <coughs> things are important because right. now you're a businessman now. You right. know what I mean? It's right. not just like you in the streets and it's like, you know, whatever, whatever. You know right. what I mean? I made right. my money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I holler at you, right. you know, or right. whatever. Right. So right. I think a lot of people need to study business right. Right. more or less. Business management business one-on-one. Business management, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You got to know business management. Being in this because yeah. they're just looking at the, the amount of money they can make. Right. You know what I mean? And right. another, another note is that I think on another note is whether the party is light or whether the party is heavy, People still should get paid. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? People should still get paid mm. and the promoter should actually come prepared to, you know what I mean? The, that prepared and, and understand there's a possibility mm. that, you know, the party might be light. Let me make sure I go to the ATM, get a couple of dollars out so that way, you know what I mean? I, I can I can take care of you right. know, people. Even if it's not the full amount, right. Right. you know what I mean? But for people to leave, for staff to leave without nothing, you know what I mean? Or really being shortchanged. You know what I mean? But I'm it's, glad you brought that up. I want to interject for a second. Um, I mean, you're a promoter. You're a boss. You know what I mean? You're running the show. So if you're a boss and running the show and you got that title, you have to know, like, a key thing to this whole game is budget. You right. got to know what a budget is. Um, keep your payroll and budget low. Okay. Unless, like, you're, you're gearing up to get an artist and you know the turnover of money is going to be great. But, you know, just starting out, you... There has to be a budget here. Right. You know, you got to know that there's a budget. budget. You're paying the person at the door, the DJ. <clears throat> um, promoters are the last to get paid. You know, you have p- people taking pictures. You know, like, you have a lot of responsibilities. Right. Like, you, you, you're, you're, you're a boss within a boss. Like, the, the owner of the club is giving you the club for the night, but that night is literally like your club. Like, like you're running the whole show. Like, you're calling right. the shots bottle specials, how you want the party to go, what type of music. Like, you're calling all the shots. So, like, this is serious. This is like a, a payroll, but, like, you're giving a check, but not at the end of the week or the end of two weeks. That night. That night. So, you have to be real professional, and, you know, your rep goes a long way. Right. You know, everyone's watching, coming out, everyone talks, you know what I mean? Everyone gives reviews. Right. You know, parties, it's like entertainment business. <laughs> everyone, you know, like the rap business, everyone gives reviews on it. So you have to carry a certain type of class that represents you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, because some parties, they, they do represent who the promoter is. This is true. You know this what I mean? True. So it's like a style, like how you dress. Like, it's all the same thing. It represents you. So, you know, you have to be professional. Know the budget. Is if everybody's cool with that budget, everyone knows what they're getting paid. And if you keep the budget low, then it's not a problem to pay the DJ or the camera person 
right. or the door girl. It's not a problem because you stuck within budget and it, you know it was all right. So you know, keep the budget within budget, and 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 definitely you know keep the payroll and you should right. be all right. Now before we wrap this up, is there anybody you want to give a shout out to? And once you do that, just right. give them information like website, right. Facebook, where where they can contact you. Uh. I just want to give a shout out to like all the promoters from everywhere, from Jersey to Harlem, the Bronx, Westchester. I want to give a shout out to Carlton Roper Dope, E. Prez, Otis, uh, behind the scenes, my man Onion from the Bronx, um, um, Reg, Reggie Cornell, uh, my man King George, um, DJs, Tri-State, Jericho, K. Shaw, my man L.A. Love, E. Kim. Um, it's endless. My man Kevin Edgar. Um, it, it's just endless, you know what I mean? Uh, with people who I work with, who want to work with, and so forth. You know, I'm cool with everybody. Right. Now, is there any contact information that you want to Contact information on Facebook. I go by the name of Michael Hunt. Uh, my Facebook uh Gmail is um, MikeGamble74 uh, at gmail.com and um, Limelight Entertainment. I'm throwing parties everywhere, so you can get on Facebook, you're going to see me, Money Mike. My pictures is everywhere, every party. Right now, I'm throwing parties at the um, Q Lounge in the Bronx. It's on Gun Hill Road. Um, I have a party coming up May 28th, Memorial Day weekend. That's a Saturday. Um, right now, I got like six birthday parties lined up, and the list is growing. So, the right. party never stops. The city never sleeps. Right. Y'all already know. Right. Well, once again, I'd like to thank my guest, right. Money Mike, for coming on the show. You already know. All right? And I'd like to thank all my viewers for watching Media Monsters Club Chats. See you at the next one. Peace.